had a really uh, heavy day of academics, and it's fantastic to see so many people are still keen on learning. But I think preserving the meniscus is going to make a big, big difference to your patients in the long run. So every new technique that you learn is, uh, I'm sure, going to help uh, all of us and, and our patients. So we've got a, a technique-based fireside chat, and we'll go through some cases and uh, then, of course, discuss them. So what I'm going to do is discuss the new Novo Stitch Pro that has come out, and it's been available in India since about a year, year and a half. And uh, a lot of people are keen on learning about that, so I'll speak about that. And then we've got uh, Mukesh, Ankit, Inderdeep, J Sujit, and uh, Billy Paul Wilson talking on one one case each on meniscus repair. So again, all of these are very interesting cases, something that all of us can learn from. So I'll start off first with this new instrument uh, called the Novo Stitch Pro and uh, what it's all about and how it's uh, used in my practice at least. So we know that access has been, I think, the biggest problem. So you saw in all the surgical demos today uh, and something that we've always uh, had trouble with is access towards the posterior part of the meniscus. Sometimes some joints are really tight, uh, especially if you're doing a horizontal cleavage tear. Uh, it's really tight. You can't really get in. And access has been one of the biggest problems. And this new instrument, which is a disposable suture, suturing device, has just a 1.6 mm entry. So really speaking, when you use this, access is never a problem. So if I'm using this, I never need to do any pie crusting because this will get into any joint. And the good part is that it, when you go in, you only have this top part of the, uh, of the biter. So it's, it's the, you've got two jaws. Only the superior jaw is what goes in. And then once you go in, then you can put in the inferior jaw. So this curved upper jaw goes perfectly into the femoral condyle shape. And then once you're in, you can introduce the second jaw. And once you're in there, you can get a huge bite. Now, the biggest problem was that if you don't have space, your needle with any other device used to go and hit the cartilage on the top. Now, here, what happens is the needle comes out, gets into the jaw, and then takes the suture out. So the needle's always protected. It's always never going to break. It's always going to be protected. So I think that this is an ideal sort of thing. You can click it twice so with one suture and one cartridge there. That cartridge goes in, you'll get two bites. So if you're doing a horizontal cleavage tear repair, you can take two circumferential sutures with it. If you're doing a radial repair, you take one and you take one. So being a low profile instrument, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic instrument. I think it's the best ever, except for the cost. And that's really uh, prohibitive and hopefully that's gonna come down with time. Now this is available with two uh, separate ones. So you get the blue one, which is size two zero, and then you also get a size zero. So in case you wanna do a root repair, I think a size zero is a better option. So we spoke about the technical challenges of the initial instruments, things like the first pass uh, mini, great instrument, but it can be difficult in a tight joint, whereas this becomes much, much simpler. So I'm gonna quickly show you three scenarios and uh, how I use this. So first one is for radial tears. So this is your classical radial tear of the lateral meniscus. So that's an acute tear. You can see that that's the lateral meniscus, that's a radial tear there, and that's the radial tear that we're seeing out here. So that radial tear, as always, you're first gonna go ahead and rasp it. So that's the rasping being done. You then go ahead and freshen it. So usually for tears which are relatively fresh, I'm not gonna be putting in any cloth. This is associated with an ACL. I'm gonna go straight for my repair. So now for the repair, you can see that that's the instrument coming in. There's only the upper jaw. Then you push the lower jaw in. So the lower jaw comes in once you've engaged on the meniscus. Once you're in there, you decide where you want your bite. Now this black mark tells you where your suture is gonna come out. So before you uh, throw your bite, decide exactly where it's gonna come out and you'll see how that needle passes that suture through. So you've got the first bite already through. Now you can slide it. So for a radial tear, you're typically gonna take an end-to-end -end suture. So one suture there, one suture here. So you go ahead, you slide it, take it exactly where you want, make sure that you know where you are, and then you go ahead and deploy it the second time. So the second time, again, the needle goes out. 
So you've got both your sutures applied, and then all you need to do is pull it out. So you've got this 2-0 ultra-bath suture in a simple fashion across. Now remember, the, when you're coming in, you need to be your entry point for this. Your portal has to be just in line, and that gives you that perfect trajectory to access the meniscus. So this then is your Sorry. And then you go ahead with the second one, and then the third one. So you've got ahead with three sutures there, and that's your uh, radial tear repair. The next one is the horizontal cleavage tear. So you've got a horizontal cleavage tear again. So this is a discoid lateral meniscus. And it's again very useful for circumferential compression sutures. So in a horizontal, so a discoid lateral meniscus like this, you'll first go ahead and identify where you're gonna trim it off. You'll trim off the central portion and then you've saucerized it. You've gone right to the periphery and now you'll find that that's the HCT, the horizontal cleavage tear in the peripheral remnant of the meniscus. So I'm going to refine it, rasp it, and then once I've done that, I'll take the cyst off, and once that cyst is off, then I'll go ahead with the repair. So again, for the repair, what do I do? I go in there, I then go ahead and And then once you've gone through and you've got both those leaves, you can compress it. So you've got your first bite, and this is now the circumferential compression suture. So this is going to go all around the meniscus. So again, you're checking where it's going to come out, and that's the black line letting you know where it's going to come out. You pass the first one through, and then you can slide it to the side. And this is just a trick where you can get two sutures out of one cartridge. So if you're doing a uh, Horizontal cleavage tear, you can get two sutures from a single cartridge and save your patient money. So you've got the second one there, and then once you, well, you've got the second one there, you'd go ahead and pull it off so you can see that there are two sutures that you've got. And then those two sutures, all you need, oops, sorry. All you need to do is go ahead and tie them down. So once you've got the two, you'll take the third, and then the fourth, and then all you need to do is go ahead and tie them down. So you've got a complete saucerization of your discoid lateral meniscus with four circumferential compression sutures. Again, very easily put with this device, very difficult to put with uh, any other device. And finally, for roots, if you have a really tight compartment and you find that even after you've pie crusted it, you can't really open it up, you can't put your first pass mini in. My, for me, first pass mini is the main instrument for a root repair. But in case you can't do that, then you could use this also for a root repair. And when you're using it for a root repair, again, because access is no problem at all, you would go ahead and take two bites, and you basically created something like a cinch with those two bites. So you've taken the first bite, And then the second bite. And because of that, you've got a loop created in that. Now, you take your sutures through that loop so that you create a cinch. Because you've taken two bites, you can create that cinch, tighten it. This is a zero number. And then put that through the tunnel. And when you've done that, you've got your root repair there with a zero number cartridge. So again, uh, a useful thing to keep just in case you're getting stuck, you're in a tight compartment, you can't get out, it's the lateral side which you can't do pie crusting on, then this becomes a useful sort of technique. So all in all, I think Novastitch Pro, uh, extremely useful. 
Hopefully over time, costs will come down and we can use it more regularly. But something that's always worthwhile to keep a, uh, uh, as a backup whenever you're doing meniscus repairs, because you never know uh, when it would be of use to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.